Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So from the last class, we are discussing about the vehicle testing on the Jesus dynamometer. Under this particular topic, we had already covered what is wheel alignment, what is wheel balancing. We had already discussed in detail about the Jesus dynamometer part. Now let me just continue with our topic of wheel alignment. Whenever we talk about a wheel alignment, we normally talk about a normal wheel alignment unit. It. But still, under particular that topic, there is one again subsection in that that is a side slip tester, which is actually checking the geometry of the axle of the vehicle, right? Because some of the time it may happen that all the angles of the vehicle are correct, that is, tow, camber, caster, all these angles are correct. Still, if you face that vehicle is dragging on one of its side, either it is pulling on the left side or on the right side of the particular vehicle. In under such scenario, it is very difficult to find out what is the actual condition of the wheel axle. For that particular reason, we are having this kind of side slip tester, which is actually checking that how much the vehicle is deviating on the left or right of the particular track. Under this particular side slip tester, it will indicate directly the value of the slip of the vehicle on your computer screen. So let us understand how does that particular happens. In this particular side slip tester, we are having this simple kind of apparatus under which we are having two different rollers which is actually uh, not taking a vehicle on a flat road condition like situation just whenever the vehicle is spinning it will remain steady at a single location but between these two particular rollers we are having in between that one plate which is actually measuring this particular data which is indicated on this particular screen so all the four wheelers would be mounted on this kind of side slip tester and as the vehicle is dragging, uh, it will be indicating the value of how much meter of uh, the slip is there per kilometer. That kind of value would be directly indicated on the screen. So from that, at least you can have a certain idea that how much slip is present. So it measures the slide slip when driving straight and determines whether the front wheel alignment is good or bad. So that's all about this particular slide slip test. Now let us understand the next important test that is a brake test. Brake test we need to carry out in order to ensure the safety of the vehicle. So it becomes a very prime aspect whenever we talk about a brake test. Under this particular brake testing, almost nowadays you know, most of the vehicle we are having this kind of just hydraulic te brake test, hydraulic brakes under which we will be having one master cylinders so of fluid would be uh, supplied with a high pressure and it would be distributed through this kind of fluid reservoir through the control valves we can actually shift the pressure to this particular different different drums or disc of the brake but we need to ensure that the entire working of the system is okay or not so for that we are having this kind of apparatus one is a roll brake type and another one is a plate brake tester so let us understand the roll brake tester under this particular roll brake tester what we are actually doing is we are having this kind of roller arrangement the front wheel or the rear wheel of brake which we need to check would be mounted on this particular rollers now this particular rollers are been driven with the help of electrical motor one separate motor would be used which will be driving the wheels now. Now we will keep the engine in on condition then we need to apply a brake right but wheel is actually spinning with the power of this particular rollers right. Now when we apply a brake when we apply a brake it will try to stop this particular roller also. Now this electrical ruler will face one force right that that one force would be induced on that electrical motor that force would be measured with the help of strain gauges right that can give you the value of how much braking force has been received or been generated at the applying of the brakes on the vehicle so this is one particular method in order to assess the dynamic structure of the wheel brake the next uh, test is the plate brake tester in this particular plate brake test normally this kind of brake uh, plates would be arranged which is having a force transducer vehicle would be taken along this particular brake uh, plate brake tester and it would be suddenly stopped 
Now, on stopping that of the vehicle, this particular plate would be dragging, right? It will slip forward. It will slip forward, and that uh, amount of slippage and the force which is received would be checked. From that, we are also calibrating that how much force has been induced. So, these are the two normal uh, methods in order to evaluate the brake performance. But in a practical application, if we want to ensure that how the how does this effective brake is, then we are going for this three different varieties of test that is P type, H type and the W type. P is actually for performance indication, H is for the heat, W is for the water. So, under this three different scenario, we are doing this kind of test. So, I, vi I will elaborate that part in a detail. Normally, in order to check the performance of brake, two most important parameters are the stopping distance and the stopping time. In this performance type of test, under normal condition, we will just apply a brake, we will check what is the stopping distance, what is the stopping time. So, that is just a performance checking. But the H type test theory indicates that whenever there is a high heat generation, it actually reduces the particular braking efficiency. So, what we are actually doing in this H type of test, we will drive the vehicle over a thousand meter of distance and during that thousand meter of distance, repeatedly for ten times we will apply a brake. After each hundred meter of distance, we will apply a brake. After again hundred meter distance, we will apply a brake. So, after a thousand meter of travel, a lot of heat would be generated toward that braking part. Now, now we will check that what is the effect of that heat generation on the braking part. We will compare that stopping distance and stopping time with the P type test and it should be within the 10 percentage of variation. If it is not there, then we need to have proper uh, braking systems or we need to make certain changes in the material part of the braking. Right? So, that is how the H type test is carried out. The third type is the W type. We are also calling it as a W water type test. Under this particular test, we are sprinkling the water on the brake surface. We are not keeping a wet track. Track is kept as a dry track, but we are keeping the braking part under water or we are spring, uh, sprinkling this particular water on this braking part. After that, we will apply brake for 15 number of times. Repeatedly, after two minute of travel, we will apply a brake. Now, whenever you apply a brake for a first time, it should have a braking stopping distance and stopping time at least 60 percentage of P type test. And by the end of 15th time of application, it should have at least 90 percentage of P type test that it should regain the performance of stopping distance and stopping time, right? If it is not there in particular, this kind of zone then we need to correct this particular part. So, that was all about this P, F and W type test. In order to measure the stopping distance, we can attach this different kinds of apparatus and stopping time can easily measured with the different kind of stopwatches. Now, let us discuss about the headlight alignment test, which has been used to measure the alignment, proper alignment of the light. In order to do that particular thing, what we are actually doing is, we will just switch on the light of the vehicle, we will um, focus that light on one straight wall in a dark room, right. Apart from that, we need to have certain indications. We need to have that data that how much, at what particular height the shadow of this particular lamp is focusing on, right. So, that should be a, in a proper way. If it is not there, we can just simply open up this particular bonnet. There are two different nuts by which we can have a correction in the position of that particular lamp, right? So, this checking of this distance is very much important in the case of headlight alignment. So, which are the different scenario of the measurement that I am going to elaborate? First thing is, we need to have a distance of this particular 25 feet from the wall. If this is a wall surface, the vehicle should be kept 25 feet away from this particular wall. Another aspect or the indication we need to focus on is the particular center lines. This is the center line of the vehicle. This horizontal line is actually the center line of the headlamp. We need to check 
physically that from the ground level to up to what height this particular headlamp is there. That distance should be kept over this, right? Then we need to start the lamp of the vehicle. After starting that, we need to check that this should be the proper focusing zone. If the center point is not been proper, then we need to check the correction. Some of the time it may happen that the center position or focusing part of this particular lamp is lying of right lamp is lying perfectly. But if we check the left lamp, it is might be in the lower or the upper position. So that can be easily corrected by opening the bonnet and changing the correction of the nut. So that is how the headlamp alignment is done. But some of the time we need to even check the intensity of the light. For that we are having a light intensity tester which is appear, uh, appearing like this. We are also calling it as a luminance meter. In this particular luminance meter, we are calculating the intensity of light depends on the light source and the direction in which it radiates the light. The amount of light falling on a surface is known as illuminance and is measured normally in a lux, right? So this is how by this apparatus we can simply measure how effective the light is some of the time if the effectance uh, of effectivity of the light has been reduced then we can actually need to replace the particular lamp particular this is how this particular headlamp alignment and the testing is done thanks for watching